there's one thing that you should do right now that will help you avoid turning your collaborators and your songwriter friends into foes. And we're gonna talk about that today. Now it's easy to get together with your various collaborators and songwriter friends and write a track, write a song, and then dream of all the success that this song can bring you. And the reality is that it very well can. Uh, it could bring you hundreds of thousands of dollars. It could bring you millions of dollars. You know, We don't know what this actual asset that we're creating, we don't really know what the potential um, is for it. It might sit for a year or two and then it might explode and, and become a theme song on a show or something like that and make us a lot of money. There's really no way to predict that. However, we have to protect ourselves when we're doing when we're in, in the writing process because when money gets involved, you'd be surprised how quickly friends and collaborators change. Let me give you an example. Let's say you write a song with someone and you have the verses, uh, you both get together and you know you both collaboratively write a bridge and they write, we'll say three lines of the chorus and you you add on that fourth line. That's a pretty collaborative effort, right? And that's typically how songs are written. You know, people focus more on certain sections and it's really never, you know, 50-50. No one writes 50% of the chorus and the other person writes 50% of the chorus. And it's just not really, that's not the way I, I've experienced it. But, uh, but generally, you know, you collaborate. And when you put it all together, it's this magnificent song. Well, let's say that the song gets picked up. We'll say in a year from now, it gets picked up for a commercial and they offer you $20,000. And all they're going to use for this commercial is the chorus. Well, what's going to happen when your co-writer reaches out and says, no, no, this isn't a 50-50 this isn't a split. They're using, you know, the chorus and I wrote three of those lines. I should get 75% of it. This is a very quick way to, uh, you know, in that friendship and in that collaboration. And you're also going to have a tough time negotiating this because it really is a 50-50 split. That's initially how you assumed it was going to be, right? And maybe that's how your collaborator assumed it was going to be until they use the chorus which they brought the majority of and see how things are changing. Now, we don't want to deal with this. Unfortunately, I've dealt with this in the past. I also know a number of people who've dealt with this as well. And uh, it, it's, it's a tough situation because it really becomes a losing situation. You lose your friendships, you lose your collaborations, right? You lose money because oftentimes that deal's not going to go through. You're not going to have two parties who own the song who are going to agree to this license. And so that, that's going to fall away, you know, and that's, it's just not going to happen. So you're going to lose money. And through the process, you know, depending on who you're working with, you might, you know, lose your reputation. All that being said, it's a lose-lose scenario. So how do we avoid this? Well, the very first thing is that we have to focus on songwriting splits. When we're finishing up a song with someone or a group of people that we're writing with, we need to determine what those splits are gonna be. Now, some people approach songwriting splits as even you know, splits. If there's three people in the room, then it's a three-way split. If it's two people, then it's 50-50. Four people, then it's just a four-way split, you know, 25% each. And other people don't approach it that way. Other people approach it like, well, you know, I did 70% and, uh, and then the other three people there, they each did 10%. So it's a 70, 10, 10, 10, right? And that can get really tricky especially if you're writing a lot of songs and nothing happens with those songs for a year or two, then you have to think back, oh gosh, what was the, uh, what were the splits on that? You know, do you have a record of that? This is important. It's important to keep a record of that. Now, I don't think that you should go off and immediately just start reaching out to all of your co-writers and send them songwriting contracts and stuff like that and sp split agreements and whatnot. I think that that can turn people off really quickly. Uh, no one wants to be handed a contract with a whole bunch of legalese on something that, you know, we all worked on in the past. There is a very soft way to go about this. And that soft way can be as simple as just shooting out an email that says, hey, listen, I'm about to register these songs with, with my PRO, assuming that these songs have not been registered already, which we're going to talk about in a second. So you can send out an email that says, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sending these I'm going to be registering these songs with my PRO. I just wanted to confirm the splits on this song. What what were they? Were they 70, 30, you know, 70, 30, 70, 10, 10, 10, 50, 50, whatever. Once you get a response back, that's basically, you know, 
their response. That's, that's basically a written little agreement. You can print that out and put it in a folder if you want. And then you should use that when you register with your PRO. Also, your co-writers should always be registering their songs with the PROs as well, uh, if they're with a different PRO, of course. That being said, if you've already registered the song, then songwriting splits really aren't anything you have to worry about because when you registered the song, you already input the songwriting splits, right? But it's important to have this on hand, especially when you're moving forward with your career and when you're focusing on licensing. Because when you are licensing your track, when the license, when the initial sync license happens, you actually have to send in who all the songwriters are, who the publishers are, what the splits are, okay? Because that upfront fee is going to be divvied out depending on the, the splits of the songwriters or the publishers. You know, this publisher is getting 10%, this publisher is getting 80%, this, this person's getting 10% over here as well. So that's important. And we need to document that. We need to actually keep a record of that. So moving forward, this is really simple. There's not a whole lot to this, but I want you to start thinking about this because it's come up a number of times recently. And I'm realizing that this is something that, um, you know, maybe not everyone has already, you know, settled in their own business. This is a business, right? And it's your responsibility to, uh, to take care of your end of it. When we're writing a song, we're creating an asset that has value and we're writing it with other people. Now, those other people own a percentage of that song. And when anything happens with that song, those other owners have to agree with it as well. All right. So when we get a sync license on that track, those other owners, even if they own 5% of it, they still have to agree to the 5% of that license. All right. So moving forward, something to think about songwriting splits. If you haven't registered your songs yet, it would be wise to just shoot an email out to your various co-writers and just let them know, hey, listen, I'm going to start registering these tracks. And I just wanted to double check on our songwriting splits. We want to make sure we have all of this squared away before we start licensing our tracks. All right. So I hope that's encouraging and, and informative and I will see you soon.